I was born in Winslow, Arizona in 1950. My grandparents lived in what was called the Jap Quarters. The reason called that, I'm sure a lot of your parents know, is because um, they held a concentration camp there after the war when Pearl Harbor was hit. And the Japanese did live out there in camps. And then they reutilized the place for boxcars and a large apartment building for Native Americans to move into, even though they weren't in like a camp, a concentrated camp. It was just a regular camp for housing. The large apartment building that my grandparents lived in, um, they raised their four children there. And when they start moving out, like my father started going to school and got married, and my other uncle moved out, there was still my aunt who lived there. But when we go back as kids, and we'd stay with my grandma, she'd uh, take my sister and I into the, it was a community shower, we had to take a shower in. And there was no really doors. You know, the women went at one time, the men went to another. And my grandma was like about, I don't know, 60s or something when I was growing up. And my sister and I would take a shower with her. We were so small in there, and then we'd talk to each other. We'd go back to the room and say, Terry, Grandma's got the longest noon as they come down to her knees. And we'd laugh, and we, we got embarrassed about it because we told my mom, and she cracked up laughing too. But I still remember that. So I remember as a kid watch, taking a shower with my grandmother. That was funny. Anyway, uh, my father was in college at NAU after we moved out from there. And until I was three, we lived on campus at a family living area called Cottage City. It was a little housing area, and it was in a cottage area, and, you know, families lived there, and they were, like, freezing. They were cold in the winter and weren't very cool in the summer, but we lived there for quite a while, and we grew up there until I was three, of course. My dad was went to school, and then he had to work after classes to support all of us. At the age of three, we moved to Yuma, Arizona. The reason being, my dad finally received his teaching certificate. And his first job as a PE teacher, we'd come back to Winslow for Christmas and summers. During the summer vacations, we'd travel out to the Hopi Reservation and visit my mother's family and see the religious dances. I remember my mother's father. He was a lean, small man who we called Gwa'a, which is grandfather in Hopi. He always had a headband on, and he already had white hair by then because he was pretty old. He had a donkey. We'd ride him all over the top of the mesa. My grandfather used that donkey to take him down to the fields for planting and bring up the crops. Shimopavi, which is second mesa, is where my mom was raised. It was a great place for a kid to have fun at. We'd love to go there. We'd run to the edge of the mesa, look over the top, and there's always trails you can take down. Also, there were steps carved into the rocks. We'd climb down, we'd check the snake picks out, pockets of flack out to picnic in. We had a good time. We went to the bottom of that mesa, and we could look out and see the lights of Winslow, Arizona from there. It's about an hour's drive, but it was so clear on a clear night. It was a beautiful place to grow up. I left Arizona and joined the Navy. I married and lived in Florida for four years. My family and I came to New Mexico in 1976 because my father's father died in 1971. He had a heart attack while working out in the fields of Mesita where he was living at, my grandmother's village. So at that time, my grandmother was all by herself. Her other children were in different parts of the state. My grandmother is from the village of Mesita in the Pueblo of Laguna, and my grandfather is from the Pueblo of Jemez, which is a northern Pueblo, also in New Mexico. By moving back to New Mexico, I learned a lot about our Indian culture and religious commitments. We had two children when we moved back, a five-year-old and a three-year-old. And I got them involved in participating in the social dances. By participating myself, I learned how my culture came about and what we stand for. My grandfather was a strong, proud man that worked for the Santa Fe Railroad. He painted the trains, but also worked on the ones that broke down. By working on the ones that broke down, that doesn't mean the ones that were there in town. He'd have to take the caboose, they'd take it out to work on down the road, because that's the only road train they work on, about five of them pack their lunches and go. And they'd be out all night long. He'd come back in the middle of the night, sometimes even later in that early morning, but he'd get up the next day to go to work, work again. He was a hard, hard worker. My grandmother also worked for the Santa Fe Railroad. She and about 20 other women were hired, and that was hard times back then to get a job. But they did the cleaning. When all the trains came in, they did the engine all the way to the caboose. These are mostly um, 
trains that took people traveling places and stuff like that, but they had some good money at the time. Painting was fun for my grandfather's relaxing time. My dad also painted, again for the fun and relaxation it gave him. My dad's influence to me was to be a PE teacher. He was a good track runner, which carried on to me. I love sports, and his influence grew on me. I'll never forget this time when I was around 10. My grandfather had a baseball team that he ran for like about 10, 15 years while he was living in Winslow. It was called the Winslow Redskins. My dad and uncles played on the team. They also had teammates who weren't Indians. They had some Anglos and some Spanish guys on there, but they had a good team. They win a lot of champions. They'd have games at the baseball stadium at nights and during the day. The days are fun because where the baseball stadium was is by the Winslow High School. And my cousin and I, we'll talk about her later. Her name is Chick. She's about the same age as I am. When we weren't helping my grandmother at concession stand, we were running to the swimming pool that was there. It was open during the summer times. But when we were helping, I think that the neatest snack of the time was, you hear it on country western songs a lot, um, strawberry soda, have, putting peanuts in it. That was good. You got to try it sometime. My cousin Chick and I would, be at, in the nighttime days, we'd be outside the stadium to shag the foul balls. We'd find cigarette butts that weren't quite smoked down and light them up to smoke the rest. No one knows who had smoked them before, but we thought that was pretty sneaky and tried to get away with a lot, but we got kind of, it tasted kind of nasty after a while. When we grew up, we talked about our youth. We both gagged over the thought of what we had done, even though we wouldn't do it again, of course, but we were, if we did it as a kid, we'd probably do it again. I think all of life is a serious matter. The conception of your children, to support your family, to raise your family, and to all the family obligations, and now to our livelihood, which is our company. Life goes on, because next is grandchildren. The cycle doesn't end, which is good because you see the fruits of your life keep progressing. Right now, we have eight grandchildren, but we have two children who don't have kids, so we, we think we'll have more. We hope. I remember one year before Christmas, my dad, my husband, and brother, and brother-in-law went to the mountains to get Christmas trees. My dad had a heart attack, and our neighbor, who was a police officer in Laguna, performed CPR until they get him to get him to the hospital. Marla, my daughter, is his godchild, and she was baptized just before. Well, anyway, the fear was everyone is vulnerable, even though it's the one you admire the most. The wonder of children are amazing, and I experienced five of them. Also, the amazing senses we have in our area of New Mexico. And last, the lifestyle out here in the Pueblo, structured with all of our religious doings, feasts, and other cultural functions, but most of all, the serenity of quiet life with no city noises and aggravations. I believe my greatest hero was and still is my dad. He instilled in me the love of sports, hunting, and working with your hands. Never give up and never stop trying. Believe in yourself and faith in your family.